Hey, physicist, a quick uh, little review on uh, figuring out the efficiency for our trebuchets. I've uh, drawn the trebuchet in its ready to fire state. Okay. And after it's fired, you know, perhaps the arm drops down to some position like that, and your projectile is gone uh, this way. What, what, what we want to do in this is to look at the amount of uh, gravitational potential energy, how, see how, if that was all turned to kinetic energy, how far our trebuchet projectile would go. So let's first figure out how much our initial energy is. Okay. So our gravitational potential energy is going to be mass times gravity times height. And I've labeled the mass mass of the counterweight just so we don't get it uh, mixed up with the mass of projectile. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to find, of course, is the efficiency uh, given my uh, the mass of the counterweight, uh, the height, and we'll talk about that in a moment, and the mass of the projectile. In my example, I'm going to say I have a projectile that has a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. Okay. Uh, my height, just made this up, okay, I'm going to say 2.5 meters, and that's from its ready to launch position to the lowest position that it can uh, the counterweight can handle 2.5 meters and uh, let's see I'm going to say that my counterweight has a mass of 4 kilograms so based off that let's take a look at our gravitational potential energy is going to be mass of the counterweight times gravity times height and given our uh, values here four kilograms times gravity, 10 newtons per kilogram, times the height I've got here, 2.5 meters. Multiply that, I know that I have okay, 100 joules of gravitational potential energy. We're going to assume that that is all converted into kinetic energy of the projectile. You know, the kinetic energy is one-half mass, I'm going to say projectile here, times velocity squared. Okay, in this case I've got the kinetic energy, I have mass of the projectile, and what we're looking for is velocity. Let's go ahead and rearrange that and solve for velocity. So the velocity of my projectile at launch is going to be uh, two times the kinetic energy divided by mass, so if you can see that of the projectile, you can see that from the uh, algebra involved, and to get our velocity, you can just take the square root of each side. Okay, so we know that velocity is going to be equal to two times our kinetic energy of the projectile divided by the mass of the projectile. Let's put numbers in and see what we get. Okay, so I see two times 100 joules from that uh, our gravitational potential energy times 0.5 kilograms, take the square root of that. See I have the square root of 400 meters squared per second squared, take the square root of that. So our velocity, our initial velocity is 200 meters per second. What we want to do is see what the, the range on this is. For simplicity I've said that if you want to you can uh, assume that the uh, projectile takes off and leaves at uh, ground level. Um, the other thing we can assume that at best efficiency, we know that our velocity um, or our projection, let's see, projectile should launch at 45 degrees. Okay, um, through a little bit of through a little bit of algebra or trigonometry, whichever we want to call it, we know that if we're at 45 degrees, that our velocity in the x direction is equal to our velocity, or I say our speed in the y direction and this is 20 meters per second. From this we can see that uh, if I uh, do the math I can find out that I'm going 14.2 meters per second horizontally and 14.2 meters per second vertically. Okay, let's go to put it, uh, go through and put a uh, table together to figure out how far uh, our projectile could go. Let's go and start filling out our table here. The change in our y direction if we take off and land at uh, ground level is going to be zero. We know that our velocity is starting off at 14.2 meters per second. Uh, we know if we uh, take off and land at the same height, our final velocity is just the opposite of our takeoff velocity, minus 14.2 meters per second. That will come in handy in a moment. We know the acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared, acceleration due to gravity. I can call that 
10 newtons per kilogram as well. Over on the x side, this is what we're looking for. Our velocity initially is 14.2 meters per second. Our final velocity is going to be the same. Our acceleration in the x direction is zero. So we can figure out time to unify this. If I um, am going up at 14.2 meters per second, and then sometime later I'm going at uh, minus 14.2 meters per second, let's see if we can figure out the time. We know that acceleration is our change in velocity divided by time. Let's rearrange that. You can see that time is equal to our change in velocity over acceleration. In this case, our change in acceleration from 14.2 to minus 14.2 is 28.4 meters per second. Again, our acceleration we get from here, minus 10 meters per second squared. And a correction, actually our change in velocity is negative because we have uh, um, V2 is negative 14.2 minus our initial velocity. So how long are we up in the air? It's in the air for 2.8, I'm going to drop the forward, 2.8 seconds is our time. 2.8 seconds. Okay. That's the same time that things are happening in the x-axis. Hey, so I have a time, I have a velocity, can I figure out a distance? Yeah, I probably can. In the x-direction, our um, uh, velocity is not accelerated, so I know that d is equal to vt. Our velocity, 14.2 meters per second. Our time, 2.8 seconds. That works out to, to just about 40 meters. That's my um, theoretical distance. So my efficiency, I'll put it in here. Uh, let's say I happened. Now, when I was doing this, I ended up having a toss of, say, 25 meters. Unfortunately, many of you had uh, distances much less than that. But our efficiency is going to be our 25 meters, the actual distance, divided by our 40 meter theoretical distance. Works out to 62% efficient. Okay, so we've got it. Our efficiency, we went 62% of the uh, distance that uh, our trebuchet would theoretically be able to go. Hey, good luck with your calculations. Check with me if any other questions.